Oxford, Virginia, and I'm so glad to finally meet you all in person. I've sent you emails, I've FedExed petitions to your homes and offices, and I even locked myself to the top of an excavator on the Mountain Valley Pipeline route, trying to get your attention back when we were asking you to do a stream by stream analysis, because see, every step of the way, citizens have done the homework for you to inform you as to how you can protect Virginia's water. We know you're volunteers. Today, citizens are providing you with yet more pads. To, one is to support the formal complaint that Wild Virginia filed with FERC. The other is to demand reinitiation of consultation that Tammy Belinsky mentioned. The other is to suspend the erosion and sediment control plans until they can be reviewed because clearly they're failing over and over and over again. We know you're volunteers. We know that Governor McAuliffe told DEQ to approve MVP and make it look like there was meaningful public input. We know that the Deputy AG gave you faulty legal advice when he told you that you have no authority to revoke certification of a certification that says you have authority to revoke certification. We know that you have been placed in an extraordinarily difficult situation over and over for 18 months or more, given the endless evidence of MVP's erosion and sediment control plan, that it's systematically flawed and catastrophically insufficient to protect our water. When has a citizen's board faced what you face? Make no mistake, I'm an historian, and you are literally making history. When the history of climate change, for example, is written, this fight against this pipeline will be written as a turning point. Your role in this fight will be featured in that history. Heather Wood, Nissa Dean, Robert Whalen, Tim Hayes, Paula Jasinski, who trusted her instincts, James Lofton, who took a non-DEQ tour of the damage and stayed to speak with citizens after the cops kicked them out, Lou Wallace, who fought for the Clinch River and not the Roanoke River. What history will you make? Some of you have very little time left to claim your legacy. Do you know how many people have been arrested or charged for thwarting Mountain Valley Pipeline construction? I, can, I know of at least 40, including myself. 40. People are living in trees. Just yesterday, someone blocked construction for eight hours. These are extraordinary <laughs> times. It's not because we're overly sensitive snowflakes. That's not why this many people are putting their bodies on the line. I am here today, instead of with my 10-year-old daughter, to give you my word, I assure you, that when people like me put our bodies between MVP and the mountain, we do not do it on a lark or for our entertainment or for media attention or because we're crazy or because we can't accept the reality of the law. We do it because the law, the spirit of the law, justice has been twisted, thwarted in such a twisted way that we know we have to take a stand no matter what it costs us personally. I came here because I believe that if more than 40 people can be brave in that bodies on the line kind of way, then four of you can be brave, or five, or six, in a different kind of way. Maybe you're afraid for your careers, or reputations, or of lawsuits, or maybe you're afraid of the Attorney General. Believe me, I get it, because I've risked all that. Have courage, find a way, protect our water, please.